Hi, this is Mike Keating with the next chapter. Our first guest is pretty amazing. She's had a recording contract track with Sony Records. She was married to who she thought was the love of her life, and then everything changed on a dime. Stick with us, because after the Forge Fit commercial, we're coming back with Elise Bruce. Ready? <laughs> I am Forge Fit. I'm becoming Forge Fit. I am Forge Fit. I am Forge Fit. I am Forge Fit. I'm Forge Fit. We are Forge Fit! Hi, welcome back, and thank you to Forge Fitness for sponsoring our show. Let them make you be the best you can possibly be. Now, we're here with Elise Spruce. Uh, Elise is a pretty amazing lady. She's not only an artist, she's not only a writer, she also is a musician. She also takes care of her son. And all of that came about, uh, well, you're known for the Missy Barrett things. I mean, that, a lot of you folks out there may know the Missy Barrett mysteries. They're children book books that are just amazing. But that all came about because of your son, correct? Yes, it did. Yeah. Actually, I, uh, my son, who's now 23, so he's no longer a child, yeah. um, has had a history of a lot of health issues. Not only is he autistic, but he also lives with a rare incurable um, life-threatening neuromuscular disease called myasthenia gravis that strikes two in a million children. Wow. And so we had a lot of hospital visits and a lot of hospital time where uh, you know we were just in there for sometimes weeks at a time, so. And that's tough. I know that, and you also did that mostly on your own, because I yes, know. Yes, I did. When all this happened, well, tell us about that. And well, that. I I I waited a long time before I actually got married because my career as a musician mattered a lot to me at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, when I did get married, it was to someone who I, at the time, believed was the love of my life. I'd known him for years, and I was mistaken. That was not the love of my life. Um, because after our son was born, and he was very sick, and, and, and we spent a lot of time in a hospital, um, my ex decided that uh, going back to his drugs of choice was much more important than being clean, clean and sober and being a dad. And uh, so by the time our son was three months old, I was a single parent. Wow. And uh, although it was tough, I was still thinking, well, you know what, we can, we can get on top of this because I can take care of this child and I can, you know, earn a living and I can cover our expenses. What I didn't count on was just how much effort and time was going to get eaten up with taking care of the unexpected parts of raising a child with disabilities. Well, and it also took away, I mean, you, you had the recording career, you were going to go out on tour and everything else. All that had to go away. Everything went away. Because I, all your focus is on your child That's now. it. I, I had a, an album recorded in the can, waiting to get pressed, waiting to go uh, out to market, and I lost that because wow. my son meant everything. 
because people are always more important than things. You can always get things back. You cannot get people back. Well, that's true. That's very, very true. And that, and you actually turn the whole thing around. I mean, Missy Barrett came about because you used to tell those stories to your son. I right? used to because you know we would be in hospital for extended periods of time, and it's difficult, even if you're an adult, to spend any time in the hospital. Mm -hmm. But when you're a child, you want to be out there running and jumping and having fun with other children yeah. and with you know your your parent or parents. And if you're stuck and you've got IVs in you and you're hooked up to equipment and you're going through procedures and surgeries, that is stolen from the child. Yeah. And so I started making stories up to keep my son occupied. And the stories that I most often came up with were Missy stories mm -hmm. and the adventures that Missy would go through and the things that would happen to her. And I sometimes would say to him, what do you think is going to happen next? Because sometimes even yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen next. So, you know, incorporating his thoughts into the stories was a good way to go. And uh, it got to a point where, you know, he would say to me, tell me a Missy story. Make, wow. me, make me a story about Missy. What is she doing now? And uh, in time... Uh, you know, I realized that these were lifelines for him. Yeah, yeah. And rather than focus on all the negative stuff that was going on in his life that couldn't be avoided. I mean, if if you're going in for a treatment, a procedure, for a surgery, you can't avoid the pain that's going to go with that. But you can focus on what can you do. Yeah. And so Missy was one of those "I can do this" or "I can help you do this" kind of person. And one day he said to me, Mom, what is Missy's last name? And I went, <laughs> Now uh, you've got to come up with something new. I said, What do you think her name is? And he goes, You know how you tell me sometimes you just have to grin and bear it? I said, Yeah, sometimes we have to just grin and bear it. He said, I think that's her last name, Barrett. I think she's Missy Barrett. And that's well, where that's her cool. last name yeah. came from. And yeah. then, you know, her universe just kept growing and growing. And eventually she started showing up in other stories I was actually writing down. Mm -hmm. And uh, she made her first appearance as a secondary character in a novel I wrote in uh, back in 2012 called Glass on a Stick. Wow. And uh, she, she was a secondary character. Her mom, Jenna, was the primary character. And, but it seemed that all the best lines were Missy's. And, and uh, I know you got a lot of fan letters and a lot of interest in that character. Just from it, That always amazes me that somebody can actually pick out something completely random from a book yeah. and that, or something you've done, and that becomes their focus. Well, I never expected Missy Barrett to become uh, a character all on her own yeah. in books, okay? Because she had been my son Lewis's character her yeah. here the lifeline for him you know and uh, glass on a stick was written for grown-ups mm -hmm. and yet it was grown-ups who were saying oh you have to write missy stories she is absolutely amazing she has got these great insights on life yeah and so i wound up writing missy barrett stories which are filled with good thoughts good lessons but they're lessons and thoughts and activities that real people of any age really could do themselves in real life. Well, that's what I like about writers and writing, because uh, you can actually put stuff out there that you normally wouldn't say to people. You wouldn't, you know, stuff that Missy can say, you wouldn't be caught dead saying, you can't well, say. Well, sometimes but, Missy wags her finger at yeah. grown-ups for what they say and do, but it's done in such a way that she's not a smart aleck and she's yeah. not uh, a little snobbish little girl. It's just you sit back and go, this is how a child perceives my behavior. Yeah, I've read some of this. This is amazing, and that, and it, it, it's just waiting to become a TV series. I mean, it just—it's it, one of those things that you go, "This should be on TV. This is what kids need to see, and this is what you know. These are life lessons. I mean, they're all well, life they, lessons. They and, are. They are. Yeah. And, and it is extended family. It's not just Missy. It's Missy and her two brothers, mm -hmm. Josh and Aaron. Her mom, Jenna. Her dad, Jim, who right now is separated from the family. He is living in Kuwait. He works for an oil company. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Grandma and Grandpa Barrett, Grandma and Grandpa Two Rivers, and all of the friends that they know that come and go throughout the throughout the stories. Yeah, see, very easily you have a whole 
a character content right there for a TV series. Exactly. That, but that's not all you write. I mean, these are all, just a few of your books. Just, these aren't even these all are of them. Of the books, these are yeah. just some of the books that you have. Tell us more about your writing. Tell us more about your books. Well, you know, to balance off the Missy Bear, which is a very positive, mm -hmm. very happy um, series of books, you know, sometimes you have to take a look at the darker side of life. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I write then the Nathan Lane Covington series, who is uh, Nathan Lane Covington. Lane is a psychopath teenager. And a psychopath, okay. now most people, when you say psychopath, they think, oh my gosh, he murders people. That's not what a psychopath is. Actually, some of our best and, and most successful CEOs of corporations are psychopaths. It's I would because, agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's because they can cut through the emotion and go directly to what are they going to do to make that happen. Well, Steve Jobs comes to mind immediately because, yeah. I mean, he was pretty emotionless. I mean, he didn't care about his friends or family or anything else. I mean, I hate to say that, but that's what a lot has been. I don't know him or know that much about him except for what I've, writ, uh, what I've read, read. And the movies. And the movies and stuff. Yeah. But uh, he's, he's very laser focused on making this happen. Yes. And if a few people have to fall along the way, well, that's fine. He's yeah, okay well, with that. Yeah, that's, that's collateral damage. Yeah, you know? which is not my outlook on life. I mean, I'm, I'm probably polar opposite from that. But Yeah, I don't like people getting hurt. No. You know, the Missy Barrett doesn't fall far from this author. So, but, but I still have to balance that off. So I do, you know, Lane's stories. Uh, I write cautionary tales as well that mm -hmm. talk about what people are embracing in today's, uh, you know, life, the technology, and how that might not be the thing they should be embracing quite the way they're embracing it. Yeah. Um, this year, uh, I did a little something, excuse me, different uh, in that my husband, Thomas Taylor, who's also an author, mm -hmm. said to me, let's write an anthology of Halloween style stories, some scary stories. Yeah. And I, Which is not your wheelhouse. It's not, not no. where I live, you no. know. And, and he said, you know, we can do this. You can write some and I will write some. Now, he's an amazing author when it yes, comes to is. scaring and the daylights out of you. Okay. And that's his, that's his wheelhouse. He's a, a great, scary writer. He is. He is. And, and, and he will write things and he'll let me read them. And, and I'll say to him, this is scaring me. And he goes, well, good. If it scares you, then this is, this is working. Um, so I accepted the challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how well I did. Okay, insofar as I tend to not do the horror thing, I tend to do the more psychological scare. Yeah. Okay, and that, that's just also where I'm going to live, right? But sometimes that's uh, as much or more fun. You know, I'm not into gore, and I, actually your husband's not into gore no, either. No, he's not. He's into... His, his work is is actually very cool. Yes, it is. And I'm he'll a, tell you all about it on yeah. this show. I, I've know? actually got a show with him as well. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, right. So anyhow, so we did Flowers on Your Grave that came mm -hmm. out in October. And so he has, you know, scary stories like yeah. the brain harvesters, ah, <laughs> you know, which is a great story. And mine are like, when zombie cows roam the earth, you know, people <laughs> go, well, okay, zombie cows, I can see where that's, there's a little horror in there, obviously. Yeah, it's something you can milk. That's, that's <laughs> it. And, but I had so much fun writing my three out of the six mm -hmm. um, that we've decided we're going to make this a yearly event. We're going to actually uh, write a, a, an anthology every October. Oh, there you are. You know, and, and put that out there and, and either scare people a lot or scare people a little bit. <laughs> well, there you are. <laughs> Halloween candy, the evil. Yeah. You know. yeah. Well, there you are. That's 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 cool. Now, tell us a little bit about some of the other books that you've written. Now, you've, those are your two that are probably most noticeable. That's but you do. Well, first of all, you do artwork and stuff like that for so many things, and you also do the music as yes, well. I do. Still, but uh, let's stay with the books here for a second. Uh, what other books have you written here? Um, well, I have written actually some some her some parody that's like uh, along the line of Stephen Leacock meets mm -hmm. Mark Twain. So I wrote the clip and dip praise the heavens multi faith congregation. Of course. Of course, that makes sense. Why would you sense. not? It's about a congregation that is very faithful to the pastor, but the pastor seems to have gone off the rails. No. But but not for the wrong reasons. He really wants to be a good pastor, but he's gotten lost along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, we get to see the, the the mayhem that goes on as this poor pastor 
keeps pressing his point, which is not on point. It's not on point at all, in fact. See, I love the fact that you, all three of these types of things, and that's why I wanted to bring that up, is all three of these types of things are so radically different from each other. Yes, it's like, are. you know, your, your Missy Barrett is nothing like your Flowers in the Grave, which is nothing like the... Uh, Nathan Lane Covington, Nathan which is nothing like the parodies that yeah, I Yeah, it's like I you're know. four different people all split up in a... Well, I've been told that, that uh, there's a lot of people that live in my head. Mm. And, and, you know, not to imply that I have multiple personality disorder, because I don't. But the thing <laughs> is, when you create uh, a believable environment in a story... Mm -hmm. Okay, it has to be believable. People have to buy into it, and the only way that you can buy into it is to make it three-dimensional. The only mm -hmm. way to make it three-dimensional is to keep everybody living in your head. Well, that's true. I find out when I'm uh, doing projects and stuff like that that it, it's like a movie that goes on in your head, and it's yeah. probably the same way for you. I mean, it's like uh, it's tough to turn off. It and is. sometimes it's you know they keep on talking when you you've written stuff down and everything else, and you go, okay, well, that's done. Okay, now shut up. Shut up. Because <laughs> yeah, they keep stop on, it. yeah. Because they keep on, you keep on seeing it. You keep on going to the next chapter of it and stuff like that. So well, and you never know what you're going to cotton on to. I mean, as an author, you either are a plotter or a pantser. Mm -hmm. And a plotter is a person that will write down the plot and it'll have you know very strict guidelines to follow. Yeah. And a pantser just starts writing. Well, I happen to be a cross between those because I have a loose idea of where I'm going to be going, mm -hmm. but I also allow the characters to direct where my thoughts are going to go and sometimes when I think I'm going to end up here I wind up actually ending up a little bit over here I and think it, a good a writer story. does that though a, a good writer actually lets the story take them where they're supposed to go and I think that's what happens with you it, it's, you start off here and you may not even know how it's going to end as you're writing it you just simply go with the flow and it's uh, you know Missy or whoever will take you on their journey well, and they do, you know, and as much fun as Missy is to write, mm -hmm. I find that Lane takes me places I would never in a million years have expected. Oh, that's interesting. So, yeah, well, he's a scary boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go on to your other things. Now, you're also an artist. Yes, uh, I am. And you brought some of your representations. I, I did. I did. I brought some. Um, now, this is, this is pretty cool. I mean, any of these careers will actually is a career. I mean, you could be a full-time artist just doing this. Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, you're a full-time writer doing this. Yes. The music and stuff like that. I've heard your your music before. It's it's great. Thank you. And that so any one of those could be a full-time career. Plus, taking care of your son is a full-time career. It is. How do you do that? Well, it's about focus. It's uh -huh. all about focus. You have to prioritize in your life what matters most. Okay. Now, one thing that I do um, every day when I get up mm -hmm. is I spend some time with myself. And I, I focus on what am I going to accomplish today? Wow. And there's always two things that I absolutely want to accomplish without question. And then there are two things I would like to accomplish. And then there's two more things that wouldn't it be cool if I could get those done as well? Yeah. And I actually envision accomplishing all of those things. Now, that doesn't mean that every day is a fantastic, wonderful, happy, 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 oh, that was just perfect yeah. day. Sometimes things happen that you just can't anticipate, all right? But rather than say, oh, man, that just wrecked my day, I go, well, that was unexpected. Well, see, I'm very much that same way. In the, in the book, Becoming Great, you're actually, your plan, what you do, is actually what most of the big CEOs, whether you're talking about Eisner, whether you're talking about Igor, whether you're talking about um, Elon Musk or whoever, it actually goes through those and gives basically their whole daily routines and all that other stuff. And it says like at 5 o'clock they get up, but they, they always spend time for themselves. They always no social media, know anything else for the first hour or two. And uh, that's exactly what you, <laughs> you're doing. You're actually doing it the way these big CEOs are doing it, the, yeah. the top 1%. Now, again, I took you away from uh, oh, showing your artwork. Okay. Let's show your that, artwork. That was an example of, oh, I didn't expect that. Yeah, well, there you are. <laughs> Anyhow, anyone that goes to um, on Facebook, uh -huh. they actually, I oftentimes have got this as, as my little profile picture. Although let's, right let's now I have a cat. Let's bring that to the cat. camera here. Can you show it? There you go. And these are my Patriot boots. Uh -huh. Now, I don't own these boots, but we were actually, um, we went to an antique shop. And these boots were sitting in a corner, off wow. to one side, 
And I took a photo of them because I thought they were like the coolest boots I had seen in a long time. Yeah. Now, I, I went home, I drew them. I, uh, this is all done with colored pencil as opposed to acrylics yeah. or anything else, right? And I really liked how that turned out. Now, I've had a lot of people say, I love this. And I've had some people say, oh, that's a horrible thing that you've done to the flag. And I go, well, I didn't do it to the flag. Actually, whoever manufactured these boots did it to the flag. Yeah. And I happen to think it's beautiful. So that's why I did it. Yeah. Right? I think it's interesting also that you put it completely in a white background so that it takes focus. Well, a lot because of artists they don't. matter. Yeah. Well, and I know a lot of, of artists, they fill up all the spaces. Yeah. Okay. But something that I, I learned from Chick Corea years mm -hmm. and years ago, back in the very early 80s, was whether it's music or anything else, he, it, the best advice I ever got was from him when I, I asked him, what makes something special? And he says, oh, play the spaces. And I said, what do you mean play the spaces? Because I didn't get that. He yeah. said, you don't have to fill everything up. Huh. And I thought, wow. Now that is an amazing bit of advice. You don't need to fill everything up. And it's true. Sometimes yeah. what I do has got a, a lot of detail all over the place. And sometimes this needs to be in the center. That needs to be the focus away from everything well, that's else. That's very cool. Let's go through a few really quickly here. We're down to two minutes. Okay. Well, so. we've got we've got our workman boots, uh -huh. which I absolutely love to pieces, and this is actually on the Pidwheels and Pearls book. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so it's a beautiful pocket watch. And people said, well, it's not a pinwheel, it's not a pearl. Why did you do a pocket watch? And I said, well, ultimately, every day, all of us have got the same amount of time. Yeah. But what do you do with it? And Pinwheels and Pearls is all about, you know, what are you going to do with your time? Are you going to sit back and say, wow, it's really, it's really bad that people are sick and have yeah. problems? Or are you going to say, you know what? I'm going to do something that's going to help save lives. I'm going to put together this fundraiser. Well, I love your, your, your positive attitude and all the things you do because you do fundraisers and everything else. Uh, I, I, we could spend another two hours just talking. Oh, Unfortunately, we're, we're out of time right now, but we would like to thank our sponsors, ForgeFit, for, for helping us out today and uh, helping you to become the best person you possibly can be. And if you like the show, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, please like us, share us, and tell your friends about us. And that Goodbye, everybody. Ready? I am Forge Fit. I'm becoming Forge Fit. I am Forge Fit. I am Forge Fit. I am Forge Fit. I'm Forge Fit. We are Forge Fit!